Let us turn to John 8, chapter. St. John, chapter 8, 24 and 25. Let's read also from 23. He said unto them, You are from beneath. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if you believe not that I am he, you shall die in your sins. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? And Jesus saith unto them, Even the same that I said unto you from the beginning. So here is a question which our Lord is asked, Who are you? Who are you? We don't know you. We don't recognize you. That is exactly what the world is saying today. Who is this Jesus? You know, dear friends, we are asked that question. Who is this Jesus of whom you are, about whom you are talking? We don't know this Jesus. Who is he? And just imagine that today, when information travels round the world in just a second or two, There are people who don't even know who Jesus is. Do you think anybody was born in this world who never heard of the S-U-N son? No. But they, they have never heard of the son of righteousness. They have never heard of Jesus. You know, we see thousands of people trooping into churches, doing their motions, you know, whatever motions. And their chants, their motions. What's the outcome? Sex abuse? Child abuse? What's the outcome? increase in wickedness in the country? That's not the son of righteousness. Somebody certainly is not doing his business. Who is that somebody? You and me. Who are you? What did the Lord Jesus Christ say in John 1 and verse 12? Twelfth verse, 11 and 12, He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. He gave them power to become the sons and daughters of God. Sons of God. He gave them power. Power to live holy lives. 
You know, my dear friends, I hate talk, empty talk. People blame me, in fact. They say, Brother Joe doesn't talk. We want to sit down and discuss, talk. I never did that in my life. Communists, atheists, others who came and sat and heard God's word from my student years, they never said, let's sit down and discuss. Never. They saw the reality of Jesus. They saw the Lord working and they turned to Jesus. So I am not in the habit of just sitting and talking. But I notice that some people, they begin with talk and they end with talk. It's all talk. Here, in the 8th chapter, the Lord Jesus Christ also said, I am, 29th verse, he that sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone. My Father has not left me alone. There, you know, is another of our modern problems. Oh, my husband is going away, far away. I'm going to be left alone. Or, see, I'm all alone here. What kind of religion is that? I don't understand that religion. When I was a young man, of course, I was, I started my travels. I was away from home for a long period. Then when I got married, the same life of travel continued. There were times when I did feel that I was far from home, especially when I knew that my wife required help and I was not there to give it. But I never did feel really alone. My father has not left me alone. For I do always those things that please him. You know, circumstances change. All kinds of sicknesses have to be faced. And death also comes. But are we ready to face these things? Or do we feel abandoned, we're left alone, we're helpless, and so on and so forth? Yes, we are. We are certainly helpless when the Lord Jesus is not with us. But when the Lord Jesus is with us, we can say, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not what? Faith. I don't see much faith in people. As soon as adversity knocks, 
as soon as danger threatens finished they are ready to throw in the towel that is to admit that they are defeated they are out of the fight now my dear friends please remember that's not the christian life at all we do face tough times and especially in our families we must be ready to face tough battles because the devil is very busy in the family tough battles and are we going to be overcomers are we going to say that i'm never alone my father is with me my father never abandons me you see my dear friends you're not going to wake up one fine morning and feel oh all is well because my father is with me why do i say that faith comes by hearing the word and hearing by the word of god it just does not suddenly arrive overnight you see friends another impediment to our faith is we never let go and let god see we feel we ought to keep the steering somehow we are the very best our thoughts are the best we need to keep fast hold of that wheel we are the experts at driving so we will not let go and let god take the steer with the result we are going to flounder we are going to miss the road we are going to slide down into the valleys and we are going to crash why we have not learned to let go now tell me does a baby ever hold itself can you ever tell a baby baby i need to quickly go and attend to this errand you just take care of yourself and i can't be cuddling you now i can't lay you on the bed either just just bump along like the astronauts you know no gravity situation do you think you would ever tell that to a baby or leave a baby like that or a baby would feel like that okay mom i am all right on my own no a father knows how to take care of you now a father knows to what extent he can expect you to use your own discernment and walk by his instructions see the walk of faith appears very hard but please remember underneath are the everlasting arms so people never get to trust these everlasting arms it's their medicine 
It's their doctors. It's their, you know, my dear friends, as usual, I have to go in for my tests. And one never knows what a test reveals, especially with people in my condition. So, but what do I pray? Lord, I don't want to be left in the hands of doctors. They may be the greatest, they may be the best. I want to be in your hands. Safest, best hands. See, the walk of faith brings you to a place where Emmanuel is very real to you. The, we call him Emmanuel because his name is God with us. Not God left in a church. Some people bow to church buildings, bow to heathen temples, so on and so forth. But no, Emmanuel implies that the Lord will be with you. Dear friends, I do not know when you are going to implement these lessons, but these are the lessons which God has had to teach me. And for discipleship, to be his disciples, in the same chapter, we see how his disciples are made free. 31 and 32. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Verily, verily, I say to you, 34, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. From being a servant, a slave to sin, we become free men. If the Son doth set you free, 36, you shall be free indeed. Free man. How wonderful. That's how we should be friends. Because Jesus said, In this world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. So never be afraid of some adversity, some difficulties. Never be afraid. Never feel abandoned. The Lord makes us his sons, his disciples, and his free men. Let us pray. Let us tell God. Lord, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Lord, I want to live this experience of not panicking, not feeling abandoned, not feeling helpless. My Heavenly Father knows I am His disciple. 
my father cares my savior's name is emmanuel loving father we want to really bring some little honor to you in a day wherein people say who is your god where is your god where people would almost ask you like those men who said who are you anyway oh loving father let us not leave this matter in doubt where we work where we live let people know that jesus is the savior of the world that we do not give him the an empty title but he is mighty to save save from sin save from fear save from a feeling of being abandoned or deserted lord we have to prove to this world we that we have a sure help my help cometh from the lord which made heaven and earth no mean source mark you my help cometh from the lord who made heaven and earth lord forgive us we are not showing you in your true dimension we are not magnifying your holy name i am not father father how little honor we bring to you forgive us lord and you us with your righteousness and power oh my father give us faith give us faith if the lord be for us who can be against us give us faith oh my father teach us to trust those everlasting arms they are not like the arms of a mother who once has to leave us or to die but these are everlasting arms that bear us and keep us we want faith lord i need faith lord my faith is not bringing to you the glory due unto your name oh forgive lord jesus this small faith of mine help these dear people let us get real oh father save us from this awful cancer of trusting in money Oh Lord we have bills to pay and bills pile up and the work place gets to be more exacting more demanding yet you are equal to all our need my god shall supply all your need according to his riches in Christ Jesus let us lean on your word let us fill our minds with your word 
Lord, lift us closer to you. God of Abraham, of Isaac and Jacob, teach us to walk with you. Please, Lord, come to us. And all those worries and troubles and trials and temptations, that have been with us and our families. We bring them all to you. That in your mercy and graciousness, you will touch these relatives who seem to think that buying houses, making money is all that they should be doing in this world. Open their blind eyes, we pray. Teach them to know they are missing the best. God's plans, God's purposes, God's riches. Oh, Father, hear our prayer. And lift us, we pray, in Jesus' holy name. Amen.